Um, we are Carlotta and then Gisella and Isabella, and we are from Bayere Italian Events. We are the promoters, and uh, we really hope you will enjoy this first class and to keep on following us. Okay, so Rosetta is yeah. your turn. Okay, I know I have two cameras set up. So there's one on the side of me, so where my computer is. So if you see me sort of turning, it's because I'm looking at the computer. And I know I need to look at the, the camera in front, but hopefully this will work out. It's the first time uh, that we're doing this. Um, I was wondering if maybe we could just take um, a minute, if you could just introduce yourself so I know who they are. Um, and I wanted to know if anybody had a chance to, uh, to need any of the show. So you can start playing as I'm playing along. So can you maybe quickly say your name and where you're from? Yeah, we're uh, Katie and Luigi, we're in Mountain View. Um, his family's from Salerno and uh, we have, uh, this is Luigi, Daria, and I'm Katie. And Hi, <laughs> good. Go ahead. Hi, can you see me? This is Renata Pagliaro. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you, but I'm not sure uh, which one. Let's see. I'm the one on the right. Can you see me putting it up? Uh, yes. Yeah. Hi. Uh, hi. <laughs> hi. Uh, so both of my parents uh, are from near Cosenza, and I'm first generation. I live in Rancho Murrieta, which is just outside of Sacramento. Uh, and I remember, I, I was just telling my girlfriend, Karen, how did my mom get the strength to need, she used to need things like it was nobody's business and it's hard. So <laughs> let's be here. Okay, well, well, well and that's what I wanna you know, also hear about it, some of the issues that you have. Okay, who else do we have? Hi, oh, is someone else going? Um, hi, Lauren and David. David. Um, we did not make the dough in advance, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Long day. We're working okay. more than we ever have before. I wanted to know also, because if all of you had made it ahead of time, uh, you know, and you were comfortable with it, and I would skip that step. So that was one of the reasons. But since some of you haven't made it, I'm quickly going to show you how I need it. Okay. Thank well, you. Okay. Thank Next you. One? Uh, hi, I'm Alana. I'm Lauren's sister uh, in a different home right now. Okay. For joining. <laughs> nice um, to meet you. I also did not make my okay. demo ahead okay, of Okay, no, that's good. Okay. <clears throat> uh, who else do we have? Hi, this is Karen. Hi, Karen. Hi. I'm in uh, Del Mar area in San Diego, and I did make the dough. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> And I don't know why my picture, can you see me? Yes, I can see you. Oh, okay. No, no, no. no Karen, no. I can't see you. Do you have your video off the camera? Yes, I must. I was terrified to see myself today. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it, but I can hear you. As long as you guys can see me. That's there, cool. there I am. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, anybody else? Oh, hi, I'm Cammy. I'm Cammy. Okay. I was talking, and I'm sorry, my security is on from a prior meeting I had, so uh, I have to exit out in order to see me, but I don't look great, so it's fine. Okay, don't um, worry about it. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I just wanted to know who, who was attending, and if I, if I knew any of you, or if you were any of my students, or if you were across the country, I just to know where you come from, but yeah. uh, so, don't, don't worry about it. Okay, well, I did make the pasta. I mean, the dough, and I live in the Bay Area. Okay, great. Welcome. And Thank you. Hey, Rosanna. Susanna? Hi. Hi. Susanna and Sabrina. We're from Vacaville, um, but my dad was born in Vericaro, and so we have a lot of family All still right. there. Okay. So first we generation. Gotta, we got to make sure you learn how to make those fusilli. <laughs> oh, we, we, I a little bit do. I want my, my daughter and I are obsessed with pasta grannies, and she's been, we've been practicing. So um, we've Good. got our go. We're ready. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, and who else? Is that it? Hi, no, this is Keelan. Hello. Hi, hi, Keelan. I'm on the East Coast, so. Oh, wow. Okay. Yep. Um, great, right, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I don't, but I have my ingredients, so I'm looking forward to making it. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, is there anybody else? Or we, uh, we met everybody. Okay, are we ready then? I'm gonna go ahead and then start um, with kneading the dough. Okay, so I think some of, uh, you should have had the recipe. Uh, that I uh, uh, that we emailed. Um, I actually am needing right now some uh, um, semola rimacinata, which is durum wheat, and this is the the flour that I use. Okay, which is um, uh, central milling, and they are in Petaluma here, um, and it's organic durum wheat and works really really well. I've been using it since they came out with it a couple of years ago, um, but if you have uh, durum wheat from Italy. Uh, or from, you know, someone else, that, that's fine too. Uh, a lot of these shapes are typically done with uh, uh, durum wheat in Southern Italy, but I also needed a little bit of uh, dough, uh, regular flour. So either if you used flour or uh, durum wheat, uh, these shapes will work great. And as far as the flour that I use um, for um, regular unbleached all-purpose flour, it's also from Central Milling. Um, here we can buy it at Costco. I don't know if you guys can buy it at your Costco. Can you guys see it where I'm placing things? Because I don't have, can you put my screen on? Sorry. <laughs> I have the computer on the side, so I'm tending to lean and, and turn on the side. But if I can just see maybe what they're seeing on the, on that camera, so I can make sure. Yeah, Rosetta, can... we can see everything. Don't worry. You can see it? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so these are the flowers, okay, uh, that I'm using today. And so what I did here, I put the, uh, the flour in the bowl. Uh, I put it here so it's easier for you to see it. Uh, you could also do this on a table, but I tend to do it in, in a bowl. And I'm just gonna put in uh, the water. So I weighted 200 uh, grams and it's pretty much two to one, okay? So 200 grams to 100 uh, mil or 100 grams of water. Uh, but you see the way I need, I will, um, a hold back, okay? So if I, sometimes you might not need it. Sometimes I, you know, it will be fine with, uh, uh, let's say 95 uh, rather than 100. And some days you might need a little bit more. A lot of, it has a lot to do with the temperature, um, the age of your flower. Uh, but the way I need it, the way my mom taught me, I learned how to do it this way when I was nine, is I sort of add a little bit of the water and I start mixing it in. So I'm not pouring it in all at once, okay? So I'm sort of, you can see, sort of shaggy, like, okay? And then I'll just keep on adding more and just keep on doing this. And, uh, and just, most of the time it takes it off. But as I said, uh, by doing it this way, I have a better idea of maybe I don't need those last, let's say, you know, uh, last tablespoon. Um, when I, when I learned to make dough and I was nine years old, I have to tell you the story. My mom said, make sure you don't make it too wet. You know, I was a kid. It was the first time, of course, no recipes. <laughs> Everything was by feeling. And, um, guess what? I ended up making it too wet. And then she was sort of, you know, getting upset with me. And I still remember to this day, my aunt came down and, uh, she says, what's going on? She goes, she says, oh, she made it too wet. I told her not to make it wet because when you make it wet, then you have, it's really hard to incorporate more flour. <laughs> and I still remember the lecture I got. And my aunt was like, well, she's only nine. She's learning. <laughs> anyway, uh, but I remember to this day. So I always tend to err on the drier side. Okay. Cause it's easier to work in some, a little bit of water than to work in if you make it too wet and you have to work in more flour. Okay. So I am going to stop at this point. So I have maybe uh, a teaspoon in here left, okay? Uh, but it feels right to me, so I don't want to put any more. And I usually do it in the bowl until it absorbs pretty much all the flour, just like this, okay? And then I turn it over to, uh, to the bowl. I mean, I turn over onto the table, okay? And this is where you really need to do the kneading. So if you look at it right now, okay? See, it's kind of, let's see if this camera can show you. I don't know, is it the right angle? See how it's kind of dry and flaky? You still see the flower, okay? It's not hydrated at this point, okay? If you were to stop. So I'm just gonna keep on kneading. And you really need to put a lot of 
strength, your all oh, your upper strength, okay? And let's see what I'm doing. Let me move this. I'm sort of pulling it and, and then, you know, pushing it and pulling it towards me. So it's almost like rolling on its own. Okay, so you can see how it's a stiff dough. Okay, this is not a wet dough at all. I'm just gonna clean my hands. And if you've noticed when I was doing it in the bowl, um, I always need with just one hand. And again, it's one of those things that stayed with me because my mom always says, keep one hand clean. So you have one hand that's available to grab something. Um, so in the bowl, I'm always doing it pretty much with one hand. At this point, if you had a large amount, you could go with two, okay? Same technique, but this is a small amount. Um, so it's hard to use both hands. But if I had a larger amount, you would do this motion, same motion, see what I'm doing? Sort of turn it and roll it, but it's hard since it's small. So I've only needed it maybe, what, not even a minute, okay? But I wanna show you already. See how it's already starting to look smooth? Okay, so if I do this for another five minutes, okay, it'll start looking the way I want it. Okay, so I need it a little bit before. Now I'm gonna, tr I'm gonna go and start working with that one. But you see it's already getting pretty smooth. You guys, can you see that? Yes. Okay, so you saw the difference from you know, the beginning. And the more you do it, again, you know, you're developing the gluten and it's gonna get, this is gonna get really silky smooth. And after you let it rest for about 30 minutes, you'll see it, how easy it is to stretch. Okay, so I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to stop here because I know we wanna play with, uh, uh, with the dough. Um, okay, but again, I'll show you the one that I needed. So if you can see this close up, it's still not as smooth as I want it. Okay, this will require at least another good five minutes or so uh, of kneading. You could probably even go more if you want it. So this is the one that I needed about half an hour ago, right before we started. Okay, so what you want to do, let's say, I'm not going to finish this, but um, I'm, gonna, I'm still going to wrap this and we can maybe take a look at it um, once I'm done. Um, I'm just going to put it in saran wrap or if you don't, if you don't want to use, you know, saran wrap, you can do what my grandmother used to do is just take the bowl and turn it over and let it rest under the bowl. Okay. That, that will work too. So this is the one that I needed before and I'm just going to show you a little bit. See what this looks like? Wow. I mean, it's super smooth. It's silky like, okay? So this is what you want. What I tend to see most of the time is people don't need it long enough or it's too dry. And, um, and then, you know, starts falling apart. It almost looks flaky like when they try to roll it out. So you need to make sure that you do need that. You need it and then let it rest. Because as you let it rest, um, it relaxes and then it's easier to, uh, to roll it out. So, and this was, um, I did a batch with um, regular flour, okay? Same thing, you can see, um, see this one? I left it that it needed a little bit more kneading. You see that? You see kind of that little rough patches a little bit? Okay, but it's still, it's still fully hydrated, okay? But I'm gonna show you, I just needed a little bit more. And even this one, see that? It's completely smooked. Silky wow. dough, but it but it's a tough. It's a I mean, um, a stiff dough. Okay, see when I pinch it, it's not wet. It doesn't stick on my hands or anything. Okay, and 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 needs to be, you know, this uh, stiff, uh, because we're going to shape it with our hands, and we're not going to use any flour at all. Okay, you'll see all the shapes that I'm going to uh, demonstrate. I've got flour on my hands. I want to get it off, but I think it's okay. Um, uh, we don't use any flour at all. And you need to make sure that you don't have any flour on your board. Because if you do have flour when you start rolling out this pasta, it will just slide. And then uh, it makes it more challenging 
uh, to, uh, to roll it out. And I feel like I need to go wash my hands <laughs> because I've got uh, a little bit of the flour, but I think we'll be okay. Um, so any questions as far as kneading the dough or letting it rest? You guys are okay? I don't hear well, anybody. My, my was very, very dry. So I don't think I added enough water. Okay. Did you add all the water for the amount of flour that you needed? Yes, I added a half a cup of water and a tablespoon of water. Okay. And, and it still looks very dry. Okay, and you weighted the, the flour or you, or you used a cup? Um, I used a half a cup of water. We're supposed to use a whole cup? No, 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 the flour. I'm saying the flour. Did you oh. measure it in cups or did you uh, weigh it? Did you weigh it? No, I okay. measured. Okay, because um, one of the things also that can happen, and I, I learned this when I, you know, I, I um, started doing the cookbook, um, depending on how you spoon it in the cup. And first of all, there are no two cups that are identical, okay? No two cups are calibrated. And I found this out when, I, as I said, when I was doing my dessert cookbook, because one cup was made in Germany, one was made, I think, in China, one was in the U.S. No three were identical. And uh, there was as much as 50 grams different in, uh, in the cups, which I was shocked. Um, and wow. also, if you take a cup and let's say you go, if you have a bin of flour or a uh, uh, depending on you know, where you store your flour, if you go with the cup, right, you're packing it in. You're getting a totally different amount is if you have the, the flour, let's say you put the flour in a bowl, and then with the spoon is the way I do it, and then you put oh. it into the cup, and then you level it, okay? That's what I had to do when I did the book. So in my recipes, a cup is 140 grams, Okay, so the weight is the best way because then you know we're talking the same same weight. Okay, Thank we're you. talking weights. But if you don't if you don't weigh it, and depending, as I said, how you you know put in the flour and how you level that, you can be off a little bit. So that's why I wanted you also to see. Okay, and that's why I also said it's a guideline the 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 water because depending on on the temperature, the brand, you know, the humidity, it can also affect it. So you need to have a feel for this is enough or this is not enough. So if yours is dry, the easiest thing to do is get your hands wet if you want to get that dough that you have, okay, and put some water in a bowl. I have a little bowl here, okay, and just get your hands wet just like that, okay. And you might have to put a little bit more and then just work it in into the dough until as you need it you you get a stiff dough but you know um but it's fully hydrated you're not seeing those flakes because i think that's what you're seeing you're seeing uh, um flour like right yes initially like before i i started kneading it when i took it out of the bowl okay okay thank so you see if you can work in uh, some water to get to get to the point where it's hydrated. But while I'm talking and maybe moving on to the shape, see if you can knead it more. Uh, so okay. that it, looks, it looks smooth the way it should. And, and then you can, uh, hopefully you can play along with it. Um, okay. Any other questions as far as the, the dough or the kneading? Oh, question. I had a question here. Um, what about when you make, let the dough rest, um, does it matter if you put it in the fridge or leave it out? Like, is it uh, I leave it at room temperature. Okay. So either like I did, you know, that you put it under saran wrap or under, you know, something that it's sealed. Okay. So you got to make sure that it's, it's tight. Okay. Because if you expose it to air, what happens is it develops a, a skin. I call it a crust, but it's like a skin. And, and, and then it makes it very, very difficult uh, to shape it. And I'm, I'm gonna do some on purpose while we're shaping it. If, uh, if you run into that, Sim sort of the similar technique, you kind of get your hands wet a little bit and you can work it out, but it's really hard to get it, uh, to get it out, you know, once, um, once it develops that. So you don't need to put it in the fridge. If, if the question was, if you need to put it in the fridge. Now, um, 
if you want to make it uh, today and then use it tomorrow, I've tested it with 24 hours. 24 hours, it does fine. Uh, in fact, I have a little piece here that I was playing around. I made some shapes, and this has been in there, but this is the, the durum wheat. It's been in the fridge for two, uh, two days, and it still looks great. Uh, regular flour tends to oxidize, so it starts changing color. So you'll see it after a day, it'll start looking a little tan color, like not as, as white. But the similar doesn't tend to do that as much. So this was the one again um, that I, I needed just you know, a couple of minutes ago. Okay, and I'm just gonna go at it. I'll show you how even this one is super smooth and, and we'll probably can use it even in the class. Okay. And you see what I'm doing? I'm really putting a lot of uh, a lot of pressure, a lot of strength to do this. Okay. Rosette, question: If if you put it in the refrigerator until tomorrow morning, for example, yes. you take it out until it comes to room temperature. Yes, yes. Otherwise, it's too stiff. Okay. And you're not going to be able to do you know what we'll do uh, now. But you see this one. This was the one I just needed. Okay just a few minutes ago and just relaxed a little bit and you can see how smooth and silky it is, okay? So this is what you want it to look like um, when, when you're ready to, uh, to shape. So I'm gonna use the one that I needed at, I think it was around five o'clock, okay? So uh, we're gonna start with the easiest shape, okay? Uh, but I think what you really need to master before you do any of these is really how to stretch it, how to roll uh, the dough. Um, and what I always tell my students is take a small amount, okay? Even this one, I'm gonna show you for, for first time or especially, take a small amount because if you take a large amount, what tends to happen, if you take too long to roll it out, um, again, it dries and then it forms a skin, okay? So watch how quickly I'm gonna roll it out, see that? See how uh, really nice uh, this dough uh, rolls out. Uh, what tends to happen, I'm just going to undo this again, okay? I'm going to do it on purpose. <laughs> uh, most people do this, and they go really slow. And if they have a large amount, it takes them a long time. But you see what, what I'm doing? It's not doing anything. I'm not pressing, okay? And it just sits there. So really apply pressure, but at the same time, you're stretching it. See what I'm doing? I'm applying pressure, but I'm stretching it out. So this is a technique. I think this is what most people have a challenge with because um, a lot of my students can't get it to, you know, to shape it into a, a rope. Uh, that is even. A lot of them will tend to do more of this. Okay. And they end up with this. All these, see all these little dimple like um so practice i don't know you are you guys practicing mm -hmm. well, yeah i'm gonna even this out okay okay so the easiest things to make i think are the cavatelli um it's i'm you know once you know how to how to stretch it how to roll it out i you basically don't need anything other than your uh, your hands, but I'm going to show you how you can get a lot of fun shapes um, with uh, tools that you have in the kitchen. So I typically cut them about an inch, okay? And you know, you can go three quarter inch, but we'll go with that with about an inch, okay? And um, so as I said, the easiest way is I'm hoping, let's see, where's the camera? Okay, that you can see. What you want to do, okay, is place your fingers in front, okay? So you go in front and then you pull towards you. See that? Okay, so that gives you an even. See how the dough is sort of even all around? A lot of people, what they'll do, a lot of my students, they'll put their fingers in the middle. You see that? They're not in front. They're in the middle watch what happens okay when you do this you see how this is thin and this is thick okay so it's not going to cook the same it's not going to cook even this is going to take a lot longer to cook okay so go in front and then just sort of pull towards you 
So you get, see that nice cave and it's even throughout, okay? Are any of you practicing? Yes. Yes. Okay, so in front of the dough, okay? And so do you see my, this one sort of bends, the middle finger, because you know, it's, it stands out. If I were to try to make them, uh, the only way I can make them even on, on the bottom is for this one to bend, okay? And then you, you go in front, and then you push and pull, okay? Now, if you have long fingernails, you can't, it's hard to do it because your nails are going in rather than, you know, the tips of, um, of your fingers. Um, so if you have long nails, I'll show you different ways you can do it with a knife. Uh, but to make this dough, ideally, you don't want nails <laughs> or long nails. Okay, so I'm just going to do a few more. Um, are, are they able to see both cameras? Yes. Okay. Okay, I didn't know um, which camera. Okay. Okay, so this is sort of the simple version of Cavatelli, okay? Then you can play if you have a gnocchi board, okay? Same thing, go in front and you pull, okay? And you get that, you get the ridges, okay? Um, you can go, you can have a lot of fun with this shape, okay? I grabbed all sorts of things that I had in my, in my kitchen, and I'll show you how you get a different shapes for all of them, okay? So these are just, um, they're zesters or graters, okay? And you just go in the back of it, okay? And see this one you get, let's see, where's that camera? Oops. You get like little, uh, little ridges. Okay, so we'll use this one. And the dough is already, I'm starting to feel it. It's already starting to dry. Okay, look at this one. Did you guys see them? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see these shapes. Yeah, I'll put them on my hands. I'll put them closer to the, to the camera. Can you see that? Yeah. Do you see how, how much fun you can have? Um, or um, you can use um, even this guy. Okay, these are a little. I need to. I need to roll out a little more depth. Okay, so let's roll a little bit more. I made my first one too. I'm sorry. What? I made my first uh, one too skinny. Ah, okay. So it's okay. I mean, you don't want it too skinny. It's better to be on the thinner size and on the, you know, fatter side, because if you make them too, too chubby or too chubby, um, they take a long time to cook. Um, so I would say the size of a pencil uh, for cavatelli. So it's about, let me cut one. I would say about three eighths of an inch. Let's see if you guys can see it. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, so that's about the size of a pencil. Um, okay, so I'm going to do a couple more. I'm going to need this. We can play with this because it, it dries very quickly, the dough. Um, okay, so you guys know what this is, right? <laughs> so watch this one. Um, and same thing. You see that? Wow. Cool. Yeah. So find things that you have in your house and, uh, and play with them. Um, or if you have a sushi mat, okay, same thing, works the same way. If you don't have a, 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 you know, a gnocchi board. So you can go this way and you get that. See that? Or you can go the other direction. And you get, you know, the same as we did before with the, the, the gnocchi uh, paddle. And you can also go at an angle, okay, with the, with the gnocchi uh, paddle. And you get a slightly different pattern. See that? Like a 45. Uh, let's see, is there any others? I think this is all I have. <laughs> um, but it just gives you an idea 
of all the, you know, the different shapes. The, this is the simplest way, okay? This is the way, you know, my mom makes them, uh, which is just using your, your fingers. Oh, uh, with the knife, okay? So let's say you can't make them with, um, um, if you don't have a, uh, no, this was if, if you have long nails, okay? So you can actually use a knife to do it, okay? So the same thing, you would just go with the knife like that and you let it curl on its own, okay? So then the, my dough is already drying, okay? So that, um, yeah. So, um, Isabella, there is a question. Uh, before cooking this, should we let this dry out or cook right away? Um, I typically will make it and cook it, but you can let it go a couple of hours, it's fine. But if you go longer, if it, it, it doesn't cook well. I, I ran experiments where I let it dry like six hours, eight hours over a day, two days, and there's just, I could not find anything that worked. Uh, so the best thing to do is um, to make it, and when you're done, uh, if you can't cook it within the next couple of hours, is freeze it. Um, and the way I do it is I would put it on a cookie sheet and sprinkle a little bit of flour and then just place it on top and put it in the freezer. And once it's frozen, then you kind of loosen them up and you put them in a container or a Ziploc bag. Um, that will work. Um, but letting it dry a day or eight hours just doesn't cook right. Okay, I'm just gonna do the last one. Okay. Um, okay, any, um, any, oh, you can also make them really tiny. Okay, so they do this in Calabria and in Sardinia. Okay, in, in Calabria, uh, by the Crotone area, they make these and they call them covatelli. And um, in Sardinia, they call them maluredus, or some people know them as gnocchetti sardi. Um, so same thing, but they're really tiny. Okay, so they're like... Uh, so I a question from Elena, Olena, Elena. <laughs> What if our dough is very sticky? I am having trouble getting it to roll with my fingers when attempting the shape you are doing. Um, if, if it's too sticky, if it's too wet, you can't shape any of this dough, okay? Because it will stick. Um, so the best thing is trying to work in more flour so that you end up with, you know, more of a stiff dough. Um, the other thing is if you're pressing too hard, you could also drag it quite a bit, but I, I don't think that's the, the issue. It sounds like it's more like the dough is wet, right? It's sticky and wet. Remember what I said, that if it's too wet, uh, it's hard to shape any of these pastas. So you're better to err on the dry side than on the wet side. Okay, so these are the tiny, see, same, same thing, but smaller, okay? And you can make these longer. Okay, remember what I said, if, if it dries, that it's starting to get a little dry, just get your hand, hands a little wet, a little humid, not a lot, okay? But see, the dough is not sticking, okay? So there's another shape that we do, that I also have it in the book, um, and, and these are relatives uh, from Basilicata made these. That's where we learned them from. Uh, but the editor really liked this pasta shape and she wanted me to include it. So it's not a traditional pasta of Calabria, uh, but we've, all, we've made it in our family. So these, you cut them longer, okay? So they're more like uh, three inches. And you use all your fingers, this one, okay? So let's see if I can work closer here, okay? So same thing, you go in front, and you pull towards you and see you end up with what we call scorza di fagiolini or mm. bean pods or empty bean pods okay so they look like beans like uh you know when you shell beans and you're left with the, the bean pot okay so that's what these are um so in front press just like you did the cavatelli except these are twice, twice as long. Okay. Okay. 
Um, any other questions before we move on to the next shape? Oh, there's another tool I forgot to show you. This is what they used in the old days, okay, in, uh, in Calabria, okay? And um, they used it to make gnocchi or, you know, again, uh, a cavatelli similar uh, where they wanted to have ridges. So you can see it's similar, okay? Even to a, like if you have a sushi, you know, sushi mat, uh, they look very similar. It gives you the same pattern. So I have one because I, I brought it back from Calabria. I'm just gonna do one more. So same, same thing. Let's see which camera. I'll go here. Maybe it's easier to see it here. Okay. Uh, no, you can't see me. Okay. See that? And you get those nice big ridges. Oops. Mm. And if you go the other direction, okay. This is a little guy that you get the long lines. See that? Mm. So these are in Calabria, they use them also to make um, uh, the Christmas you know, the turdilli or tanaricoli, depending on how you call them. Uh, but that looks like a gnocchi, you know, the shape. So that's what they use it for. So, okay. Um, I'm going to move these out of the way. Okay. And we'll move on to the next shape. Okay. So the next shape, again, this is where it, it really... It comes in that you need to um, to be good at you know rolling it up because what we're gonna do is we're gonna stretch this even further than we did for the cavatelli, uh, more like a spaghetti. Okay, so I grew up with these and my mom used to make them and she called them fettuccine. And then when I went to Tuscany, I had them and they called them peachy. I go oh. <clears throat> That's what Fidelini I'm like, but you know, of course, no one knew about in Calabria. So, uh, so Tuscany, I think that it's uh, it got recognized for that, but it's basically doing exactly what I did before, but I'm doing it much thinner. See that? And it looks like a thick, a thick spaghetti. Okay. So they call them peachy, pinchy, or as I said, my mom called them Fidelini. So these, I have them also in the book. But again, you're just rolling it out into a thick uh, spaghetti. And you can make them as long as you want, but you know, typically I would say, you know, 12 inches or so. Okay, that's what those are. Um, and using the same techniques, you know, a thick spaghetti, you can make uh, the pasta. This is the pasta that it's made in Sardegna and they're called lorigitas, okay? And it looks like a little bracelet. Okay, this one, the thinner the better, okay? Um, so about 10 inches is typically what I cut them. You can, you know, you can do them short. You'll see why. Um, see, there's the camera. So you wrap it around your fingers, okay? And I pinch and then you hold it and you twist. And you, oops, mine, mine broke this first one. Okay, I'll do another one. Let's do another one. I, my, uh, it's, um, it's drying out. Wow, I'm amazed how quickly it's drying out today. Okay, do it again. So, pinch, let's see, okay, and then twist. See that? Pretty. Put it here. Have you guys seen this one before? Mm -mm. Yeah. Okay. I'll do, I'll do a couple more. So 
So uh, eight to 10 inches, this one is typically, again, it depends on your fingers, you know, uh, you might need to go eight inches. If it's 10 or a little longer, then you just do what I did. You just pinch it, okay? So just think, uh, I don't know. Can you guys see it? I'm trying to see where to put my hands where the camera is. Okay, see how I pinch it? And then I'm just twisting it. And you get a little bracelet. Okay. Um, you can also make the same shape, a thin spaghetti like, uh, and make them look like um, gemelli or twins. And let's see. So just fold it and then twist it. Um, I made this one a little too long, but, but you see, same thing. And then, uh, let's see, I'm just gonna cut it. Okay, so you get that. You've seen this one as dried pasta. Yeah, could you do that one again? Okay, so do the thin spaghetti, okay? And then I fold it. Let's see. You want you get? Can you watch here? Or are you looking at this camera? Yes. Side. So you just twist it. Oh, twist it. Yeah. yeah. And then typically I, I I chop the ends off, and it stays. See how it stays? And once it dries, it stays. Hmm. This is pretty. Okay. Okay, um, okay, let's move on to uh, the next shape. We're gonna do, uh, we're gonna move to Puglia now. We're gonna do a ricchette. Okay. I'm actually gonna do a small amount because my dough is drying up. I'm just gonna get my hands. See what I'm doing? I'm just getting them a little wet because I'm already feeling it a little bit. It's trying. Okay, so orecchiette, same thing. You need to roll it out, but not as thin, okay? And then you use a knife. Oh, I'm trying to see where you can see it here. Maybe if I do it this way. Okay, so you cut it, okay? This is the end, but we'll do this one too, okay? It's like you're gonna make a cavatelli, but then you flip it with your thumb, okay? So let's do a few of these. Okay, you cut a small amount, okay? The knife in front, see how the knife is dragging it? It's pulling it, okay? I, I'm actually, this one, I'm ending up to doing the next shape. This, I call them uh, strascinati or cencioni, okay? This is easier to do because they're flat, okay? So let's go back to orecchiette, okay? And then you put your thumb and you get your little orecchiette. So do you see what it looks like, how you get that roughness? You guys see that? Mm -hmm. Is anybody trying it out? They look like face masks. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. They do look like those N95 masks. <laughs> but we don't have any. I don't have any. Okay. <laughs> But you, you sort of get, see how you're dragging it? You get that nice roughness on it. Okay. Yeah. Well, on the last one, or is that time? Let me finish this one, then I'm going to try what I can't do. Okay. So I'll do a couple more. And you can make these even really big if you want. Um, Let's see, I need a bigger uh, dough. Uh, they call them orecchioni. Have you ever gone to Bari, Bari Vecchia, where the ladies make them outside their homes? 
they make the small ones, but they, they use a different technique, which uh, I haven't mastered it. Uh, they are so fast. But if you do it thicker, you know, the rope, rather than what I showed you, you end up with a much bigger one. So it's, as they call it, an orecchione. So you'll see ends up being much bigger. See that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Compared to the little guys. See that? Can I see you do it, uh, how you shape it around the knife again? Please. Okay. This is the, the bigger one, okay? But I can go back to the little one. Okay, so see how... It's like you're making like a, a cavatelli, okay? Uh -huh. But the knife needs to go all the way. Otherwise, you end up with a really thick edge. And then you just use your thumb to flip it over. If you don't go all the way, I know I've seen a lot of people. Um, what happens is I'll show you. Okay, let's say I leave it here, okay? See how you get this thick edge? Even though you flip it, but see, it's got a really thick edge on this side. So again, just like the cavatelli, you wanna get both edges to be the same. Um, so you wanna use the knife and pull it all the way until you get to the other side, okay? So when you turn it, see, it's pretty even all around. Wanna do some more? Yeah, I, I'm not... Uh... Okay, what are, you, what are you struggling with? With uh, the, the knife action. Okay, yeah. let's do some more. Okay, I'm trying to see which way might be easier to see it. So the knife is in front. Okay. Okay, and see how it's curling in front? Mm -hmm. See it's making like a, see how it curls? Mm -hmm. It's making like a, as I said, a, a cavatelli. And then you just pick it up and just flip it. Rosetta, c'è una domanda da Lynn. Uh -huh. uh, does the knife uh, have a sharp edge or is it like a table knife? Um, actually, you can use any knife, but this is a, the, 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 sort of the typical Italian serrated. See how it's serrated? Do you guys see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. These are what all the Italians have. <laughs> Everybody has them in their kitchen. And um, they, uh, as I said, even if you go in body, those uh, ladies, they all use these. But any knife uh, uh, will work. You're just trying to, um, you know, you want it so it, you drag it. You see how it curls? Like, if, I'm not going to turn it, okay? But see how I made a cavatelli? Okay, see that? This is how they also make cavatelli in Puglia, okay? So that's all you're trying to do, okay? Except I don't let it go all the way. I sort of, as I'm holding it, I flip it. But even at this point, okay, see, I can flip it. See that? And I still get the, the orecchietta, okay? Rosetta, Lynn, she's asking if it's like an American steak knife. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, an American steak knife would work. Okay, but even if it's a flat edge, even a knife will work. But a steak knife would, uh, would work well. Yeah. Okay, I'll do a few more. And then we'll move on to the next, um, next shape. These take a little bit of practice, okay? So the one I started doing at the beginning, those are like strascinati, they call them, they call them cinchoni. And those, you sort of hold it. See, I'm dragging it, the knife, but you hold the dough. See what it's happening? See that? Mm -hmm. I'm dragging it, okay? So you stretch it out. So this one, I, I stretched it. I, um, I, I held it a little too much, okay? But let's do another one, okay? So you hold it, and then you use the knife to stretch it. See that? So you're just dragging it. And that's that's the actual pasta? That's the shape of the pasta? Yeah, yeah. Pilata. Yeah, you might have seen them, you know, they sell them even dry. Um, mm -hmm. the, they call them cencioni. I've seen them call them uh, uh, strascinati or... Isabella, you're from Puglia, right? Yes. What do they call them? 
Where you? Uh, where... The last one is Trashinati. Yeah. I text. I wrote the name in the chat. Okay. You can yeah, see that's, uh, that's typically that's typically <laughs> typically what they're called. And Trashinati means something you you stretch. You stretched. You drag. Yeah. 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 So another shape that they do in Puglia, sort of similar technique. Okay. Um, is um, they're olive leaves. Okay, so this is the way I do it. So you roll out a little bit of dough, okay? okay? Same thing with the knife, okay? And you hold it. Let's see. I have to see where to, where to go. Let's, uh, so and you, or you can even pinch it, okay? Depending on the size of you want to make the leaf, okay? So, but you want it a little pointy, so you sort of get the shape of the leaf. Okay, same thing, okay? Except... You know, I'm holding it and dragging it. Okay. See that? Mm -hmm. Oops, where are we? And you get like a leaf. You can flatten it out. Okay, these are called foglie, foglie di olivo. Um, I'm just going to do some more and drying out on me. <laughs> okay. Okay, same thing. Let's do, let's do a few more. You know, I think you can't be afraid of putting pressure. No, you need to apply pressure. Yeah. Okay. See, and you get that. So if you do these with uh, green pasta, and typically that's why they're called the olive leaves, because they do them with green pasta, uh, they look like real leaves. Okay, see that? Yeah. See? And, and as I said, you can make them even smaller if you want. Okay, so let's, uh, we'll go back to Calabria now. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to play a little bit with the, uh, with the dough. Uh, this is just flour, okay? Regular flour on um, all-purpose um, flour. And I'm just going to, um, I'm going to move on to the, what we call in my town, we call them fusilli. Um, but they go by many different names. In fact, when I was uh, researching for my cookbook, I was on a mission to find all the different shapes of pasta uh, in Calabria. And everywhere I would go, they would say, oh, this is our traditional pasta. You know, and they would call it whatever they called it. And I was excited to find out. Oh, I said, I'm like, oh, I found a new shape. And then I would find that it was the same dough, the same pasta uh, that was shaped with a kneading needle, okay? So this is um, what we use uh, to make uh, the pasta. And you can make your own. Uh, the way we do it is we take a coat hangers and we clip it on, on the sides and then just take some steel wool and just sand it to, so you go, you bring it down to the metal, you remove the coating, or you can buy a kneading needle. So a kneading needle will do it. Um, or you can use a skewer. Okay, it's hard to find long, long skewers, but this is a skewer, so you can see it's pointing. Okay, so the only thing I've done is I've just taken the tip so you don't poke yourself, but this will work too. So I'll show you with, the, uh, with both. Okay, so what we do here, I'm just going to move it out of the way as it's drying. Okay, is we're going to, again, do the same thing. We're going to roll it into a, a rope about also a uh, little thicker than a pencil, but not, not much more. Now, if you make them thicker, then you're gonna have to stretch them out longer or you can make them shorter and a little thicker. And I'll show you both, okay? Um, so about three inches or so, okay? Um, let's see, I need to cover this also. It's drying on me. Okay, so watch how I do this. And I'm hoping you guys can see it 
You I'm can't get it. You're it'll be on camera. Else. Okay. Okay. So I put the kneading needle in the middle. Okay. But I don't pinch it. I don't do anything. Okay. It's almost all the way. Okay. Through. Okay. And then still have some flour. And just same sort of same technique when I'm rolling it out. I'm pressing it, but see the ends are open. Okay, they're not closed. Let's see. And then I don't know how you can show you this. You quickly pull it out. Okay, and you get that. Okay, where should I put it? Yeah. Okay. Let's do another one. So this I think is the most challenging one. Okay. See how the ends are not closed? Okay, they're open. Okay, and then you sort of have to go like this really quick. See that? And I pull it out. Okay. Now what tends to happen the first time, and I tell my students, you have to make a lot of these, okay, to, uh, to really get good at it. Uh, I would say you need to make at least 20 or 30 of them. Um, they end up pressing too hard. And so they squeeze it. So I'll do one on purpose, okay? I'll try to uh, imitate sort of what a lot of them do the first time, okay? And they press it too hard. So this is what they end up with. See how it's really tight and squeezed, okay? And what happens is, as I pull it out, no, ah, this one wasn't bad. Okay, I have to do a better job of squeezing it. It still came out perfect. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do one more. Um, they sort of gather together, okay? I'm trying to mess it up. I'm just gonna press on it, okay? Okay, so see how it's kind of squeezed, okay, on the kneading needle? So it's not gonna come out like the ones I did. And this is typically what happens, see? It gets squished like that, okay? And it's okay, so gently pull it out, okay? And by the time you cook them, they actually turn out fine. <laughs> so don't worry if yours end up looking like that, okay? Uh, it takes practice, uh, that's, that's what it boils down uh, with this pasta shape. Uh, but I'm gonna show you different ways that you can shape this. Um, you can do little guys, short ones, which uh, they do in Puglia, okay? They do them really short, and uh, they even do two at a time. We have a friend who's from Puglia, and she showed me how she makes it when I learned Orecchiette, and Isabella can probably tell you about this. Um, they call it Maritati. Oops, my dough is drying out. You can see when, if it dries out, it's, um, it slips out easily. Okay, see they're short, just like that. And they mix the, these with orecchiette. Okay, so they'll do this with orecchiette together. It's a dish that, as I said, oh, where did I go? Uh, they call it maritati. So you might want to practice um, with uh, just, you know, start with the short ones. Uh, rather than going, you know, with the long ones. So just cut them like that, okay? And I'll just do one. This is a long, it's a long skewers, okay? And, and if it's just one, probably you just use one hand, okay? See, and you end up with, almost looks like a, I guess a ziti like, but you see you have the hole, mm -hmm. okay? And it's short, okay? And then you can go, you know, a little longer. I'm going to make this one a little longer. Okay. See these, when it's this, this length, it slips right out. See that? I don't have to do anything. Um, and then there's another technique that they shape them. So in Calabria, a lot of places they call it macaroni al ferretto. Um, but I found them in, in other places, they call them in parvettati. And then if you go uh, in the uh, Vibo area, they call them filet, okay? 
and they shape the filet also similar to the next shape that I'm going to show you, uh, which they do in Sicily, uh, which are busiati. I'm working with, as you can see, it's the same. Uh, this is flour rather than the semola, but typically the busiati we would make it with semola. Um, but I'll just show you the technique. Okay, this I think is the easiest way to do the busiati. Um, this is the way we do them when we, you know, we, I do culinary tours in Sicily. And so I'm going to go close to the camera. Okay. So you just wrap it around like four or five loops about, okay. Just like that. Okay. And then you just go back and forth with your hand. See, and you get that. Hmm. Okay. Let's do another one. And you can make them longer. Okay. And I'm going to show you a different technique to do this. Okay. It's like that. If you guys want to make some, practice along. Just go back and forth with your hand. See that? Okay. We can go back. Um, let's see. We can go back to... Uh, to the same one we want. Okay. Oh, we're really going over time. <laughs> okay. We're okay to stay longer, right? Yeah. Okay. I know I was supposed to do this in an hour, but I, I took up time uh, with kneading the dough. But I think it's it's critical that you know uh, how to knead the dough and what the texture of the dough should be like. Okay, so I've gone back to the semola. So I just want to show you a different way that you can also uh, make uh, the busiati or the filet. Okay, so with um, using, um, see if you guys can see it. Okay, you just see what I'm doing? You just push this along. And same thing, okay? So different technique, but I think um, the way I learned in Sicily, I find it easier for my students to, uh, to do it, okay? So you can leave it like that, it's a little thicker, or you can roll it up a little bit more. So you end up with same, okay? So these would be the filet or, or busiati. Um, okay, let's see. I'm trying to see what other shape. Oh, so as far as um, how, uh, when I make these, okay, the, uh, the fusilli or the maccheroni or ferretto, typically what I'll do is I'll put them right next to each other. Okay, just like that. Okay, so it helps if you have another person but this is how we do it, okay? And then you would just have another row there. Can you guys see that? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then when you're done, whether it's an hour or two hours, I said, you just, you know, lift them up and you put them in uh, boiling um, salted, salted water. If you want to do them ahead, um, I, would, I would freeze them. You don't need the, the kitchen towel. You can just put them on a cookie sheet or with some parchment paper, a little bit of flour, and you freeze them just like this, okay? And then once they're frozen, they're like rods. You can literally pick them up and, and put them in, um, uh, in a Ziploc or a container. And, and that works, uh, that works fine too, so. Um, okay, um, I think I've covered pretty much all the shapes. Um, is there any other shape or anything you can think of? So if you were just going to use this dough for a fettuccine or something, it, would it be the same dough or a different dough? Um, the dough in Calabria, we do make fettuccine, what we call maccheroni larghi, which are like a pappardella, and I have them both in my books. Same yeah. thing, it's the, you know, the, in the book, I wrote them with the unbleached all-purpose flour. Um, the only thing is you need to need a little bit more water, okay? Because 
Um, this is a stiffer dough uh, that we're not using again. As you saw, there's no flour at all on my table. Um, so you need an extra tablespoon or a little bit more. And the way you would do it, can you give me the rolling pin? I can show you, but this is going to be, uh, you know, hard work for me because it's a little stiffer. Okay. But I'm going to see if I could maybe just work in a little bit more flour into this. I mean, not flour, water. Okay. No, oh, it's fine. Okay. And I just need, I think I have some flour there. Um, so you would just shape it into, let's say, you know, you, you had a ball. This is a small ball, so it's not going to be a, a big roll, but I'll show you the technique the way I learned from uh, my mom. Okay. And uh, you just use a rolling pin. Now this is small that I might not be able to show you um, how we wrap it around, but when it's uh, initially, when it's pretty thick, you sort of just use the rolling pin, okay? And I turn it, see how I'm turning it? Like 90 degrees. Just keep on doing this. And the reason why you want it a little softer is because I can stretch this, but this is a lot more work, okay? So just a little bit, a little bit more water. Uh, so you just keep on doing this, okay? And if this was a, a large amount, it would already start, you know, being a bigger circle that when you get it to um, this thickness about, okay, you start wrapping it around, okay? Put a little bit you wrap it around the rolling pin. You see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you just keep on, again, this is small, so it's really hard, but same technique. Just keep on doing that. Just keep on doing that. And it will, it'll end up, you know, stretching. I don't think I've ever worked with such a tiny <laughs> amount of dough. But I think you get the idea, okay? So this ends up being, you know, much, much larger. And then what you would do, let's see if I can do this. Now, remember this doesn't have any eggs, okay? So if you're gonna make like the lagany, like in my book, there's a recipe for lagany and chechi, um, which is uh, tagliatelle-like um, and, and chickpeas, or as I said, the wider ones, you need to leave it thicker, okay? Because you don't have any eggs. The eggs is what really binds it, that you can go paper thin. If you've ever done pasta with, um, with eggs, you roll it out as thin that you can see your hand, okay? You can actually see the wood uh, on the board. You can't do that when you're working only with uh, uh, flour and water, okay? If you, if you try to do it that thin, it will fall apart, okay? So you can see what I'm talking about. The technique is the same. This is small and it's hard to show you, but when you get it to the, you know, the right, thickness, then you would just, uh, this is about where I would stop, okay? Um, which is much thicker than if I were to do it, you know, pasta with, um, uh, with egg, okay? And this is typically what we would do. Ah, uh, do you mind getting me a knife? <laughs> and then you would just fold it, okay? Like that. And then you would cut it. And I'll show you. So this is going to have a sort of a nice bite, just like all this pasta does, okay? Because it's much thicker. Um, and then you would just cut it, see, just like that. And you can go, these would be what we call the lagany, okay? Just like that. Or you could go the wide ones that are like that. And these are in my book, and we call these maccheroni larghi, okay? These are really, really good. Um, see? They're white. Let's see, this, the camera is here, so I'll move them here, okay? Oh. So you see the, the difference, these versus, you know, those. But that's the technique, except as I said, I was working with a wow. really small, small amount of dough. Um, 
so it was hard to uh, you know to roll it out but yeah, I'll do these but you can make them you know as skinny as you like and these are a little skinny but they're much thicker so remember don't try to laminate it uh, you know, go on the pasta machine and go to number six or the last one because this will fall apart uh, because it has no egg in it, okay? So it needs to have, uh, they're thicker. They're more like, um, uh, it's closer to like, I don't know if you've ever had pasta la guitarra like, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a thicker, uh, thicker dough. So, okay, Beautiful. any other questions? One last question is, um, how long uh, would you cook, for example, the cavatelli? Uh, I, I don't imagine you'd want them al dente, so what do you think? Um, you need to cook it until all the flour is cooked through, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, the best thing to do is taste it. And depending if you make it with regular flour, if you make it with semola, the time will differ on the time. I mean, with the, just flour, I mean, it can take even depending on the size, the thickness, you know, if you're making them thin or if you're making them a little, you know, um, larger in, in thickness, they could take a long time. I mean, that's why with the cavatelli, I made sure to say stay pencil size yeah. um, because if you go thicker than that, it can even take you 15 minutes, okay, uh, to cook them. Okay. Um, so... I would say taste it. Um, with flour only, usually at 10 minutes, you can start tasting it. It cooks more like dry pasta okay. um, mm. rather than if you're used to uh, pasta with egg. Again, you know, being really thin, that cooks right away within a couple of minutes. Uh, this one, it, keep in mind, is the thickness. Uh, it's much thicker, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to cook longer. Uh, the semola tends to cook a little uh, faster. Uh, then if you're just using flour. Uh, the semola can be, you know, five, six minutes on some shapes. Uh, but the pasta, I even like when we do the, the fusilli, the filet, uh, if we're doing it just with flour, these can take um, 12, sometimes even longer than 12 minutes. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. What other questions? No other questions? Has anybody played with anything? Do I get to see anything? <laughs> um, I've, I've, I've just used all the dough. I wanted to use it all up, so I, 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 I'm doing all cavatelli. Um, <gasps> see how I do this. I'm trying to, this is our first time, so I'm trying to figure out how I can, okay, I did it. Oh, wow, those look great. Oh, my goodness. Can you see them? Yes, you oh, guys did a great job. Wow. I don't know if the others, can the others see it? Uh, you have to um, click on it and then hit pin video. Are you guys, um, are you guys able to see it? Yeah, that looks great. They look great. Yeah. Um, those look so much better than mine. I'm not showing mine. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Uh, that's what this is all about. You know, it's for you to learn and ask questions. As I said, I'm trying. I know I'm leaning on the side. I'm trying to see if I can do this one. Uh, this is Katie, right? Yeah. Yeah, Katie, who has made all the shapes. You <laughs> look great. <laughs> I know I'm looking that way and I know I'm supposed to look that way, but I have the computer on the side. Next time I'm gonna put the computer in front. <laughs> so, oh, that is great. And you know, kids love doing this pasta. I mean, I, my kids learned uh, when they were very young, they're like machines now. Um, so it's a good time to get, you know, uh, kids involved uh, so they can uh, start playing and have fun with it. Oh, those look great. Okay. Um, any other questions? I think I kept you guys a little longer. I hope you don't mind, but um, anything I didn't cover or uh, that you can think of? You make it look so effortlessly. <laughs> well, as, I, as, sure. I, 
as I said, is practice makes perfect. So the only way you get better at this is just keep on doing it. Uh, the more you do it, the, the better you get at it. So that's why I, I always say start with the cavatelli because the cavatelli are really the easiest one, I think. Um, but what you really need to focus in, I think the first thing is learn how to stretch the dough. You know, knead the dough. Once you have a really nice dough, um, learn how to roll it out. And, and then go with the cavatelli. The cavatelli are easier to do because then the next one are uh, a little bit more challenging. And the knitting needle, I think, is the most challenging for most people, um, you know, because um, you're stretching it at the same time. You don't want to press it. You don't want it to stick. You want it to, you know, pull it out um, uh, easily. Uh, but I showed you the other techniques that I think are, are, are easier to do. So like, you know, uh, these, um, the, the busiati or filet, or just go shorter. You know, it's okay. You don't need to make them uh, super long. I mean, there are people in Calabria that make them like 16 inches, unbelievable. <laughs> um, uh, but they all taste great. Whether you make them two inches, five inches, or, you know, 10, 12 inches, uh, they all end up um, tasting great. And, and the one that we did at the beginning, like cavatelli, that are longer, these, the empty uh, bean pot, um, these I think are easier for you, you know, make them as long as you can, four inches, if you can get all your fingers in. And when they, when they cook, they grow, they almost end up being very similar to, uh, uh, to the fusilli, to the maccheroni al ferretto. They sort of have that, the same, uh, same texture to it. So, um, so just, uh, to freeze them tonight, uh, put them on a cookie tray, a little flour and right in the freezer. Yeah, put them in the freezer and then tomorrow morning or, you know, uh, once they're frozen, you'll see they'll be like, sort of like these. These, I made them a little earlier. See how they're, they're stiff. Mm -hmm. See, they're, they're pretty stiff. So they're going to be like this frozen, okay? And then you just take them out of the tray frozen and then either you put them in a container or in a Ziploc. But when you're ready to cook them, Okay, make sure you don't thaw them at all. You go straight into um, a pot of boiling salted water. And if you made a lot of them, uh, the best thing would be to split them because especially if you don't have the heat, you know, you have a, a big burner. What happens is because you're putting in a lot of frozen uh, pasta. So it's gonna cool the, the, the water and it takes too long to come back to a boil. So if you're making a lot, let's say for, I don't know, eight people, I would, I would split it in two pots. Otherwise what happens is if you put it in a, a giant pot and you're putting this big blob, you know, cold mass, it, it lowers the temperature too much and the water takes way too long to come back to a boil. Because whenever you're cooking pasta, whether it's dry or fresh pasta, you want that water to come back to a boil quickly. You don't want the pasta to just sit in there and do nothing. Um, so, so split it in two pots if it's a large amount, that way it'll come back to boil faster. But definitely put them in frozen. Any of these pasta, you want to cook them frozen. You don't want them to uh, let them uh, stay in, let's say, in the container or the, or the Ziploc uh, because it'll all stick together. Then you'll have a big, big clump <laughs> of, uh, of pasta. Could they be refrigerated until tomorrow, same way with on a cookie sheet with a little bit of flour and just put them in the fridge until tomorrow? Or um, are they better? I, I think it should be okay. I should test it out. I've never tested it out in the fridge overnight. Okay. Uh, but I think it should be okay because it's not going to dry. Um, the, the, what happens is with the dry compared to, let's say, you know, store-bought pasta, which it's made the same way. It's just with durum wheat, uh, with the semola. Um, is that they're drying, they're controlling the drying. So the drying is controlled, the temperature, humidity, and it's done perfect. And so the pasta cooks evenly. Uh, when you do it by hand, first of all, because it's all different thickness and you don't have you know, the equipment to dry it, it doesn't dry evenly. And what ends up happening, it almost ends up being brittle. Uh, and that, that it just breaks, it falls apart. And as I said, uh, I think I did it last year. I even have a post, I think, on Instagram because I, I you know, I wanted to, some of the students had asked me. And I, um, I did it over like six hours, eight hours, 12 hours. I think I went over a week and I didn't like any of that. 
it just doesn't, doesn't, it's gummy. It doesn't cook right. It just doesn't taste right. Um, so the best thing is to freeze it. Okay. Or make it, you know, you can make it three, four hours ahead. Um, and if you also make a lot of it and you don't have space, uh, what you can do is you can put another kitchen towel, let's say on this one, and do another layer and cover it. Um, so, you know, it doesn't dry out if you do it, let's say, in the morning. Um, because if you're making a lot, it takes a lot of space. Um, I, do, I, I tell my students, you know, in the old days, uh, my grandmother, and maybe some of your grandmothers in Calabria, uh, they didn't have, you know, a cookie sheet or trays. Um, all they had was a table, if they had a table, but small, they needed for working. So they would lay a mat on top of the bench. So they would put a tablecloth or a clean sheet and the entire bed would get covered with, uh, uh, with this pasta, with the fusilli, uh, the macaroni al ferretto. Uh, you know, my grandmother, I think, had six kids and the two of them was eight. So you can imagine how much pasta um, they would make for eight people. And uh, the entire bed would literally get covered uh, with pasta. So, <laughs> um, okay, uh, any other questions? Oh. No? How did okay. it go? I guess just to get some feedback, and this is the very first time I've done this, first time that we're using Zoom, and you know, we're trying to figure out how to best set up the cameras or where to angle them. Uh, it just, um, if I were to do more, uh, if there's any feedback, or you guys can even send me emails or what we can do to, uh, to improve. I always, you know, I believe there's always room for improvement, anything we do in life. Um, that would help me out. And if there's anything you guys are interested, um, another class, you know, let, let me know or, or let, you know, Isabella know. Um, so maybe we can plan another one. Yes, absolutely. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you going to say something? Oh, yeah, so I just know, um, I know you have a book on desserts. Uh, we're missing, trying to make pastiera for the first time for Easter. Do you have any tips? Um, <laughs> I, I don't think, well, I don't know. Unless you can get wheat berries, you're already getting a little too late. So I would say do it with your yeah, farro. Okay, we actually got wheat berries. So. Oh, you have wheat berries. Okay, so wheat berries take three days to soak. Uh -huh. I guess we're going to do that today then. Yeah, so start soaking them uh, because pastiera, I mean, you, you know, the, even the Italians will tell you, you want to have it ready before Easter. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can eat it even, you know, the day you make it if you have to, but it's better if it sits. Um, and so the, and the berries take about three days. Okay. So start soaking them today and uh, you should be ready. And I was going to say, if you didn't have wheat berries, um, then you could use farro, and farro, of course, you know, cooks quickly, uh, at 45 minutes, and you're basically done, so, um, and the recipe, it's, it's a great recipe, so if you just follow exactly how it's written, um, you shouldn't have any, any issue with it, so, let me know if you make it, post a picture. Definitely. Okay, so. Any, any other questions? Oh. Uh, Rosetta, I'm sorry. Um, when you're making the fusilli, especially when we're making them for a big crowd, is it necessary to keep them covered, like as you go along, or is it fine for them to get dry? Uh, I, I missed something that you said. Is it okay to keep what? No. Uh, when we make the fusilli, we're making them for a big crowd. Uh huh. We always, my aunt would make a big deal about covering them as we go along. Is that a necessary part to keep them moist, or is it okay for them to get a little bit of dry? I uh, remember we talked about the drying, drying not even. Remember I said if you're making a lot of them, I would cover them. Okay, I'm sorry, I missed that part. Yeah, and then so I uh, remember when I was talking about the tray, because I said if you don't have enough trays or cookie sheets and all that, you can put another towel on top of this and put another layer. Or if they're going to sit for a while, they put another layer. Because that okay. uneven drying is what causes them not to cook, you know, the way they should be. Okay, so. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. And any other questions? Very much fun. Thank you, Rosetta.
Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank Grazie. you for joining me. As Grazie. I say, next time I'll put the computer in front because I know I'm always doing this. I'm leaning because I put the computer on my side. <laughs> so, um, okay. Thank you, so, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Rosetta, and Bye. thank you, everyone. Bye. And uh, <laughs> you can stay update on our website and on our Facebook page to know about the new cooking class. We have some.